Fleeting Fancies Written by The Quill and Sofa Shop Luna curls into a ball on her bed, staring down at a pool of moonlight that she had collected. Celestia's face was reflected on it, as she addressed it to the Cancelot Elite at the Nightmare Night Masquerade. In honor of great services my beloved sister has done, Equestria, I hereby declare this eve be no longer Nightmare Night, but Luna's Eve, an evening to celebrate all that she's done, Celestia declares, to weak applause from the residents. Luna smiles at her sister's latest attempt to make Luna more included in equestrian life. Only two weeks ago had she set up a special court just for her sister to preside over. And a few weeks before, the Celestia launched a nationwide campaign to have all school books, which had the legend of the Nightmare Night in them, burned. And for new ones, with Luna's return to replace them. It's all very kind, but I'm still curled up in my bedchambers. Luna thought, wryly to herself. She could not bring herself to leave, could not bring herself to face Pony Kai and expect them to forgive her as her sister seemed to. Careful, if you stay lost in thought long enough, you'll lose your way back down here, a mischievous voice said onto her ear. Long ago, Luna might have jumped, startled, over this, but now a grin unfurled on her face as she turned to face the white stallion on her bed. He was a barely recognizable fancy pants, his monocle gone, his suit unbuttoned and tied loose. His hair had lost its usual gel, and was like a brilliant blue flame. Now how could I get lost when I have you to weigh me back down to Equestria? She teases him lightly. So, Mr. Pants, how do you get in? Fancy Pants grinned. This was perhaps the favorite of the games he played. Why, must you guess, Princess? In a matter of seconds, Luna's well-trained eyes raked over the entire room, noticing every minute detail. She had the room in perfect order memorized. She could spot every small detail, every flaw, including the two misplaced books on the bookshelf on the east wall. Luna immediately levitates the books off the shelf. Before levitating all the books along the bookshelf away, looking to see if there's some sort of secret passageway behind it. Not your strongest, my dear princess. Fancy Pants said softly. It was the first time that he had been able to fool Luna. You immediately went for the red herring I placed on the books. Too preoccupied to notice that there is still residual magic on the doorknob, and that you could hear the creak of the door opening only moments ago. Luna drops the pile of books and turns to Fancy Pants. At first, her expression is hardened as she purses her lips and glares at him, hating how easily he had manipulated her. Yet, after a moment, she let her mask crumble down, and allows a giggle at her own foolishness. Very clever of you, Mr. Pants, Luna says tightly, not wanting to show much emotion. Since you won the entry game, you may choose the next one. What would you like to play? Fancy Pants considers her words for a moment, a proud smirk never leaving his face. Have you ever played hide and seek, princess? Fancy Pants asks. You mean the Falls and Phillies game? She says. Why, yes. I find that as an adult, there is greater joy in playing it, Fancy Pants says. I will hide and you will seek. I have 60 seconds to hide and you have 60 seconds to seek. You can use any skill at your disposal to do so. I will not leave the perimeters of this room. Does that sound fair? Why are we playing this? Luna asks, a resigned tone in her voice. Just play along. I did win the entrance game after all. Luna sighs and lets Fancy Pants conjure a simple blindfold and tie it around her eyes. She counts loudly, feeling quite idiotic and foolish as she listens for Fancy Pants' hoof steps. Once the 60 seconds are up, she tears off the blindfold and starts to look around the room. At first glance, it appeared that there was no change in the room. As if Fancy Pants had never been there, it briefly occurred to Luna that he might have fled, but she could not fathom a reason why, and pushed his unsavory thoughts out of her head. Luna's bedchamber was grandiose, with an enormous closet and dresser, as well as several chests in which she kept her things from the ancient world. The enormous bed took up the central third of the room. Luna lifted the bed, her sharp eyes examining the floor. As she lifted the bed, 
she could feel an external magic pulling against hers, and set it down. The sheets of Luna's bed were weaved from the moonlight itself, powerful magic bringing it into a solidified form. With a simple spell, the moonlight was cast away, revealing fancy pants curled up inside it, his white coat blending in excellently. He laid and splayed across the bed, gritting childishly. Why, it seems I have been bested, princess. He sees, not sounding particularly bothered by this. Care to join me? Luna's entire body stiffens at the prospect of lying in the same bed as another pony. Her eyes narrow once more at Fancy Pants' insolence. But greater curiosity and desire overcomes her, and she climbs onto the bed, sitting as far away from him as possible. She was grateful the bed was so large. As she sits, she summons the moonlight streaming into the window, manipulating it into a solid form before placing it on the bed as sheets once more. The moonlight conforms into their bodies, hiding their bodies from the flank down. Why so far away, princess? Fancy Pants inches slightly closer to Luna. Do not test me, she says, jaw locked. I am only here because this is my bed, and despite my best efforts for the past year, I have been unable to force you to leave my premises. Well, without resorting to my measures, my sister would not approve of. I didn't realize I was such a burden, princess, Fancy Pants says, amusement dripping from his tone. I'd rather thought you enjoyed our time together. I have seen the look of trife and glee whenever you best me in our little games. They are but childish fancies, and the joy of triumph and the crush of defeat is fancy also. Fancies, in nature, are fleeting, and the overwhelming feeling remains the same, Luna says. You are a fancy in your own right, Mr. Pants. Perhaps your parents were not so foolish in naming after all. Ever the elegant one, Princess, Fancy Pants says, a hint of admiration in his voice. Yet your eloquence in speech does not disguise your lack of true understanding. Is it not fancy, fleeting, or true, that sustains pony kind? We cannot live on unhappiness. We must take solace on our own fancies, and when they flee, we must find new ones, or else we shall sink into despair. I would rather be sustained in love, strong and true, rather than fancies. If I was built on fancy, I might just float away. From there, there would be nothing to hold me down to earth, Luna retorts. I'm surprised you haven't simply risen up on a hot day going higher and higher until you crash into my sister's beloved son. Fancy Pants lets out a light chuckle. Perhaps spending time with you has been weighing me down enough to stay firmly planted here. That would certainly explain why you feel the need the creativity to break into my room every evening. There was a moment of silence. You are insolent, Fancy Pants. The white stallion glares over Luna and offers her a genuine smile, one of the few he had ever given. And yet, this is why you enjoy my company, the thrill of a challenger, he murmurs. You do not challenge me. Luna turns away haughtily, her undulating mane brushing against Fancy Pants' face. Then how is it that I win our little games? On occasion, Fancy Pants laughs. Princess, you have told me your opinions on music, on art, on fiction, on nature, and society. As he says these words, his horn levitates a wine bottle, and he pours red wine into a couple of glasses, one floating towards Luna, the other for himself. He takes a sip. Yet, we have never discussed poetry. I abhor it, Luna says. She takes a sip from a wine glass. So, if we were to have a poetry contest, I would win, Fancy Pen says, winking. We are not having a poetry contest. Poetry is yet another foolish fancy. Any poet can better express themselves in normal, rational words. Poetry is for the weak of the mind. So you are simply not good at it. Luna drains her wine glass. Do not test me, Mr. Pants, she repeats, glaring at him. She trots in beauty, like the night, of starry skies and cloudless climes. Have you heard that one, princess? Fancy Pants asks. I do not know if there's a better way to phrase those words. Merely speaking of a mare's beauty is an insult to her, Luna snarls. Perhaps to a mare like you, Fancy Pants says. 
Perhaps I should try an original composition. I hardly think that anything you have composed would convince me a poetry's worth. A pony should be able to express himself using rational thought. My love is moonlight, streaming through the window, casting its shy gaze upon the empty bed. My love is sunlight, brilliant in its sight, great in its scope, air and life itself pausing to soak in her warmth. My love is a candlelight, gently flickering, against a stack of well-worn books on my bedside table, comforting me through the night, laughing at my inability to sleep without it. My love is fire's light, an eruption of sights and sounds, fierce in nature, powerful in destruction, unable to be extinguished by any foal or fool. My love is starlight, bright eyes twinkling, with mischief and wit, a constant shimmer, destroying darkness, letting love shine through. Luna opened her eyes. There was a long pause. The poem was... passable. Fancy Pants laughs. The end. Hello guys, Snoggets here. Congratulations for making it to the end of this video. As always, I always enjoyed reading this fanfic to all of you. And I hope you enjoyed it too. Alrighty then, now that we're done with this reading, it's time to review this fic. Okay, so here's this. When it comes to a romance fic, one needs to love the other. And I think the author did a really creative approach when it comes to this fic. Specifically, Luna actually loves Fancy Pants. Which is definitely an interest to the reader, especially it sparked my interest when I wanted to read it to you guys. Because Fancy Pants is more of a former pony more than Luna is something else. So they do have their differences and that's what made me uh, read this fic actually. And I think it could really trigger the reader's interest to actually read the fic. What's impressive about this fic is that the figurative language is actually used correctly. So whether you need to be descriptive as possible on one paragraph to make the reader feel something about this fic, or you just stick to the basics so you can just say that and not really be descriptive as possible because that's all really there is to it. And I think the author did a really good job doing that. However, there is a lot to say about the flaws of this fic. Specifically, the ending was very, very bland. I could not really say anything about the ending because the ending wasn't really well thought out. When it comes to a perspective of a romance fic, you need to have a beloved ending, some kind of romance in it. Which I didn't really personally feel from the ending at all. Now don't get me wrong here. I'm not saying that there should be romantic endings on every romance fic, but at least there should be some relevance on it. And I didn't feel like there's no relevance at all. In fact, I didn't feel anything in the ending, which leads to its disappointing tone. When it comes to writing in genres, for instance, sad, grimdark, comedy, romance, you need to have some tone in it at least to make the reader feel something, because that's why the reader wants to keep reading. The author's tone in writing this fic isn't really that successful in making the reader feel something. Especially as I'm the reader, I didn't feel anything at all. During a romance fic, the tone usually comes from the relationship between one character and the other. And the author did a really good job on that, specifically with Luna and Fancy Pants because they're two very different characters. And I see why the bad relationship is starting to build during the earlier in the fic because these two are very different from each other. But then later around, I didn't really feel any tone that the author tried to influence to make the reader feel something about these two characters even more. Which, I didn't really feel as the reader anything at all, especially on the ending, which was kind of bland of course. Overall, this fic was okay, but the author can improve tremendously when writing romance fics. Now, I definitely believe that the author can improve because he definitely has potential on writing romance fics. Now, all he need to do is just practice and practice. Anyone can get better with practice, and me personally, I only been writing for a few months, and the feedback that I got from m most of my readers, I definitely improved from that feedback, and as I kept writing more and more, I got better, and I definitely feel like this author can do the same. Alright, let's wrap this video up. Anyone can improve in their writing, especially beginners. Don't be afraid to keep trying, because definitely, once you get better, from weeks to months to years, you'll definitely see improvement. And notably enough, a lot of writers just give up. Never give up when writing. 
it is a very complicated process if you want to get it right. But trust me when I say this, I started and I'm definitely not giving up. Especially when narrating, since this is pretty new to me. I'm not giving up, and you shouldn't either. Remember that practice always makes progress. Alrighty then, as always, thank you for listening fellow viewer. And if you liked the video, please leave this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. I upload weekly fanfic reads every Saturday. Alright, that's it for me. This is Snogritz, signing out.